Please open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'll meet you there in just a moment. I'm so proud and glad to see all of you here today, and I'll have one announcement before I begin. Uh, in January, the first week in January, I will begin a new Bible class for the young adults, and I would ask them to please give me some ideas on some things you would like to study, whether you'd like to study a book in the Bible, or if you have something in mind, maybe even a softback Bible study book that you would like to reference, uh, please let me know, and we'll begin that in January in the Fellowship Hall, okay? So we're thankful for all of you who are here today. Hope you have a good Thanksgiving. It's always a good time. The holidays are always good, and I hope and pray for your families that y'all will have a good, good holiday. There was a dad, he came in to his son before Thanksgiving, and he gathered all the family around. He said, son, I want you to say the prayer. And uh, he said, well, dad, what do I say? Dad said, well, just say what I say. So everybody bowed their head, and the young man said, Dear Lord, I cannot stand it when my wife's family come over for Thanksgiving. <laughs> that, that may be the truth, right? But I'll tell you this, Thanksgiving is a blessing. What we're going to study about today is what will happen when we are thankful. And as I was looking over this lesson, I thought, you know, I hope in my life that I can be more thankful for everything that God has done. Because I begin to see different things in the Bible that really are connected with thanksgiving. And I want to share with you, first of all, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that your thankfulness is connected with your faithfulness. And the Bible says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now notice. Quench not the spirit. When I looked at this word, it literally means do not put him out. You know, so God's Holy Spirit, the teaching of the Holy Spirit that we have, which today is the scriptures. In the first century, they didn't have to study, but today we have the scriptures. So the more thankful that I am, the more I will learn the teachings of the Holy Spirit, is what he's saying. He continues, despise not prophesying. What that would mean in today's term is, listen to what the preacher is saying. You know, you came to church for a reason. And he says, don't despise the preaching of the gospel. And he says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. A thankful man, he's always looking for good opportunities and he, he does away with bad opportunities. Which he concludes with that, he said, abstain from all appearances of evil. Friend, that means when evil shows up, we go the other, the other direction. Somebody said, well, if it appears to be evil, that principle would apply too. But what he's really saying is, when evil appears, we abstain from it. A thankful man does that. A thankful man is interested in bringing the Holy Spirit's teaching into his life, listening to the preacher, holding fast to that which is good. Thankfulness is connected with faithfulness. Now I'm going to flip the coin over. In Romans chapter 1, he reveals a people, he says, and they were not thankful. It's interesting how he concludes this. He said, they became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became as fools. He continues and said, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into a, an image made like into four-footed beasts and creeping things. They worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever forever. Amen. Why did they go away from God? Well, the key was because they were not thankful. So let's go to our text in Colossians chapter 3. There are four things that will cause us, or when we are thankful, what it will lead to today. And I want to share these four things with you today as we think about Thanksgiving and the holiday season. I'm going to share with you this poem while you're turning there. Lord, I want you to know how thankful I am, not just around the turkey and the ham, I'm thankful to bow before your throne. I'm thankful for the Bible that makes your will known. Please help me to have the right attitude and to live with the service of gratitude. I pray I'll remember this Thanksgiving season that I'll look at my blessings and realize that you are the reason. I understand that there is not just one day of Thanksgiving, but I raise my hands every day with thanksgiving. When a man lives thankful, number one, he loves. 
When a man lives thankful, number two, he is led. Number three, he changes the way that he lives. And number four, he also has a list of things of which he is involved in. So I, I hope that I will look at these closely and allow these to influence my life. Let's begin Colossians chapter three. Every time I push the button, it jumps forward, so I have to uh, watch it closely. Let's begin Colossians three and verse 14. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. It's interesting. Notice how many times he mentions being thankful here. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you're called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I want to focus on that word grace for a minute. It's also translated in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, gift. Literally, what you're saying to God is, I sing these songs to you in thankfulness to you as a gift. That's the idea of this passage. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. That's the third time this idea is mentioned. He continues, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And fathers, provoke not your children. But he says, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey your master in all things according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, pleasers but with the singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward, for you serve the Lord Christ. All these things are motivated by one thing, and that is thanksgiving. So I hope today that you and I will search our hearts. You know, I feel like I need to sit down for a little bit and just think about everything that God has given to me in my life. And when you do that, number one, you can't help but love. In fact, in verse 14, he said, Put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. I want to focus on that word charity just for a moment. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Sometimes my son and my daughter, they like to play basketball out in the driveway. And I remember one particular time we were out there and I was probably cooking something on the grill or doing something. And my older son, Josiah, he's, he's coaching Maley, you know. That's my next child. And uh, he, he takes the ball and he says, you see this ball? I want you to picture this like it's your child and you're trying to get it back from me. <laughs> I thought, well, that's a perfect description of, of how to coach someone in basketball. You know, you think about if your child were lost today, what would you do to get them back? Well, you and I, we would be thinking of millions of things and we would think, well, I would do anything. I would die to get my child back. Friend, I've got to ask you, what about the person in the pew next to you who may not be your child, but they're God's child? You see, when we love people, it's motivated by the thanksgiving that we have for being the children of God. Now, look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's interesting what he says, if I don't love. He said, I become like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. He continues in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, uh, I could speak with the tongues of angels and have not charity. I'm become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, it doesn't do anything. I've really tried to work hard on myself in the last year or two to really make sure that I'm motivated for the right reason. You see, I want to love people. And I feel like the more that I've studied this issue, the more that I've learned about what a faithful Christian does, friend, I'm fully persuaded that is a man of God who says, you know what? I know I don't like you, but I love you more than I don't like you. And because of that, he's motivated to do some things. Now notice what this love does. Love suffers long 
That's one of those things that says, you know what, I don't, I don't like what you do. I don't like the way that you treat me, but I'm going to love you anyway. Love is kind, he said. It envies not. It, it vaunts not itself. It's not puffed up and it does not behave itself unseemly. And it's not selfish. It doesn't seek its own. It's not easily provoked. I mean, I think in my own life, that's one of the areas I struggle so bad. I, I get easily provoked. But I want you to do something that's very, very hard that I thought to myself, here's what I have to do with this passage. I take that word charity and I set it aside and I put my name there. Josh suffers long and is kind. Josh is not vaunting himself, is not puffed up. He doth not behave himself unseemly, is, is not easily provoked. And notice, thinketh no evil. This idea is he does not take account, he doesn't take record of evil doings of other people. You know, of course, righteous people of God don't want to think evil things, that, but that's not what he's saying. Some of your translations may reveal this. But he does not bring up the dirt on people. That's what he's saying. He does not think evil about his brethren. He continues and he says also that he does not think uh, evil, but he rejoices in the truth and rejoices not in iniquity. He bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love is the hardest command of all. You look in the last part of the chapter and he said, Now abides faith, hope, and charity, and the greatest of these it's charity. A man who's thankful, he wants to be motivated to love others. I'm reminded of a, a boy who was asked to say the prayer at the Thanksgiving dinner. You know, the four-year-olds and the three-year-olds, they thank God for everything. You know, they're like, dear Lord, we thank you for the cups and the plates. You know, they go on and on for the silverware. He thanked God even for the broccoli. He thanked God uh, for the casserole. And he said, but dear Lord, I'm so thankful that I'm not a turkey. <laughs> and me too. I don't, I don't want to be the turkey. You know, who's that turkey in your life? I want to encourage you to think this holiday season, I may need to bake that turkey a pie. I can think in my life, you know, everybody's got enemies. Even though we don't want them, we've got them. The Bible says we, we, we've got to love them and pray for them which despitefully use us and persecute us. So I, I'm thinking in this holiday season in my mind right now, who is a person that does not like me that I could do something nice for? I hope I can fulfill that. Will you challenge yourself with me today? I hope you'll take the challenge. I'm, I'm willing to take the challenge. Let's find someone in this holiday season that we can do something nice for just because we're children of God. Let's move on. Number two. In this passage, not only do I see this thankful person is motivated by love, but I love this. He's motivated by how he is led. Look here in Colossians chapter 3 in uh, verses 15 and 16. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Once again, he mentions the idea of thankfulness is connected with how we are led, how we, the Spirit of God, the Spirit's teaching, the words of Christ, they dwell in us. You know, I'm reminded of David. He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not do what? That I might not sin against thee. Once again, thankfulness motivates us to put the word of God in our hearts. It's connected with faithfulness. So we've got Thankfulness and faithfulness are always connected in the Bible, something that uh, certainly we need to think about this holiday season. Let me give you this passage. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. I'm going to give you four scriptures here. This one I want us to read together, Romans chapter 1. I'm reminded of a guy, he said, Dear Math, I'm not a therapist. Solve your own problems. <laughs> well, man, I amen that. I wasn't very good at many subjects in school. But you know, you think about it. People have problems, and people includes me. 
I need to be led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of His teaching in the Bible. You know, I need the words of Christ to dwell in me, to keep me away from sin. That's the whole purpose of the gospel, dwelling in our hearts. Now, look here in Romans chapter 1. There was a group of people who decided they weren't going to do that. He remember, he said that they were unthankful. This is the same group that we noticed in the introduction. It says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. He gives a list of about 28 sins there. They were filled with unrighteousness, fornication, covetousness, I mean, maliciousness, backbiting, uh, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. The list goes on and on and on. And he said, and they which do such shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, what was wrong? It began, it began with unthankfulness, verse 21. They refused to retain God in their knowledge, and because of that, they were not led. They were not doing the things that they were supposed to do. Every time I think about Thanksgiving sermon, I, I think about this story when there was a mother turkey and she saw her little chicklets, I guess you call them. He, she saw those young turkeys and she said, if your father knew what you were doing, he would turn over in his gravy. <laughs> Friend, I, I want to encourage you today and I, I think about myself too. Just because I'm the preacher, I can neglect my Bible study too. So I've been thinking to myself, you know what? I need to get back on my personal Bible study time. Not studying for a sermon, not studying for a Bible class. I, I need to sit there and, and just listen to God. And I hope you'll take this challenge with me too. You know, I think to myself, I want to be more thankful. I want to spend time with God. I want to read the Bible. I really want to soak it up. And I hope today that you and I will accept the challenge. You know, God was serious when he looked at the prophet and he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. How many times could you think in your life that you went astray from God because you did not study like you were supposed to? I think immediately of some things that I could have fixed in my life just with Bible study time. When I was a brand new Christian, I think about it, I went astray from the church almost immediately after a few months. And I know exactly why. It's because I didn't pick up my Bible. Friend, I hope today that you and I both will be challenged to be led to retain the, God, the knowledge that, that God wants us to have. You know, the Bible still says, study to show yourself approved unto God. How many of us this morning could say, you know what, I, I need to get back studying the Bible. Most likely every person in this room could say that this morning. Let me give you this passage. Let's read it together. Psalm 119, verse 103. I want to begin there. I'll give you three verses as I move from this point to point number three. I want you to see how David thought of the words of God. So we want to let the words of Christ dwell in us richly. Notice what David said. He said, how sweet are your words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Honey is one of the best things. I mean, chocolate, I love chocolate, but honey is a natural thing. You can eat it and feel good about eating it. You know what I mean? <laughs> honey is so good. And he said, that's what God's words are like. He said, through thy precepts I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and I have sworn that I will perform it, and I will keep thy righteous judgments. Number three. Not only is thankfulness motivated to love, but thankfulness gives us motivation to be led. And I like this, it gives us motivation to live. If I were to ask you what is your role in life, I wonder what you would say. My role is to be a husband, a father, and a preacher, and a Christian. All those things are my role in life. Now, it's interesting to me that he addresses all the roles of life right here. He said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is well pleasing. Fathers, 
bring your children up. And he said, do not provoke them lest they be discouraged. To all the areas, he said, servants, be obedient unto your masters in all things according to the flesh. The servants here is your, your job that you work. Now, during this time, you say, well, the Bible's promoting slavery. No, the Bible's not promoting slavery. <laughs> this man works for another man. That's all that is. They didn't have corporations that they went to work for every day. So they went to a farmer and they said, how can I work on your farm? And the apostle said, if you work for that man, you have to be obedient to him just because you are a servant of God. So anyway, he includes all things here. Let's go to, uh, give you one passage. Let's go to Psalm 100. I'm going to go to Psalm 100. There was a man named H.A. Ironside, and he went out to eat with this atheist man. And these men are very wealthy. You know, they're, they're tycoons such as people who built ships like the Titanic. They owned corporations and steel mills. And H.A. Ironside sat down with one of these millionaires. And H.A. Ironside said, do you mind if I say a prayer before we start? His friend said, oh, you're one of those. That man looked at H.A. Ironside. He said, you know, I don't thank God for anything I have that I worked for by myself. I just dig right in. H.A. <coughs> Ironside didn't know what to say. He was kind of shocked. He just sort of looked at him for a minute and he said, you know what? My dog does the same thing. <laughs> he didn't know what else to say. The truth is, it's only right to give God thankfulness in our lives. You think about everything we own. You can go to your closet right now, whether you're a man or a woman, and you can pick whatever it is you want to wear for that day. You may even have different types of shoes. You've got boots that you work in, church that, shoes that you go to church in. Maybe you've got some penny loafers that you that are like casual dinner party in. Tennis shoes. Friend, I, I travel overseas sometimes and I see what these people are wearing. And the same clothes that they worked out in the field in are sometimes the same clothes they come to church in. And I'll tell you right now, they don't have more than one pair of shoes to pick from most times. They do everything in those same pair. We've been so blessed in America, we don't even realize it sometimes. I hope that this Thankfulness will motivate me or you if you're a wife to be a better wife. Motivate me to be a better husband, a better father, a better steward of my job. You know, these are specific areas that are mentioned in this passage. Let's read this together. Psalm 100 verse 1. He said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His presence with singing. And know ye the Lord that He is God and that He made us. And not we ourselves. And we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. It ought to motivate us to be thankful in every area of life. I'm going to move on. Number four and finally, there is a list. Now, it's interesting that this is concluded in the passage that is your text. He said, knowing that you serve the Lord for your inheritance. Whatever you do, do it heartily, knowing that you serve the Lord to receive your inheritance. I want to give you this last verse. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. There was an elephant in a circus that was so belligerent, nobody could control him. He was destroying everything. I mean, you picture an elephant in a, in a room and he's, he could break down the wall if he wanted to. Nobody could get close to him. Nobody could figure out how to make this elephant calm down. There was an Indian man in the audience who began to sing in his native Hindi language. And that was the only thing that calmed this elephant down. Why is that the only thing that would work? Because that was the only thing that he could call home. Friend, I want you to think about today when you 
are at Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving table, and you are sitting around, you're smiling, you're laughing, you're having a good time with your family. If you are around members of the church during Thanksgiving and you are laughing and having a good time, you are the closest to heaven that you will ever be. I want you to think about that. I hope and pray that you and I will remember that those people are the ones that we will spend eternity with. And let's challenge ourselves. What is it that we're going to do for our inheritance because of our thankfulness? I want to give you this last verse. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. What service are you going to do for the Lord because of your thankfulness? What I mean is not coming to church, uh, not just studying your Bible. I'm saying what is it that's going to be a ministry for your life? Can you think? Some of you are already involved in it. The elders here have made being an elder a ministry for their life. The deacons who serve this congregation have made the office of a deacon the service of their lives. In this passage, he connects your service with your faithfulness. And as we already know, it is connected with our thankfulness. So as we sing this invitation song, I encourage you to think about what it is that you're going to make a ministry for your life. What is it that I can also add to my ministry in my life or you can add to your ministry in your life if you're already involved? I hope that you will think of some things during this holiday season. If you've never obeyed the gospel today, I, I hope that you'll be motivated to show God right now how thankful you are. I want to give you one verse that says pretty much everything that you could do. There are many verses that we could read in the Bible, but in Acts chapter 2, they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? You know what he told them? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Friend, are you willing to do that right now? They did that in Acts chapter 2. We, we could go to so many others that teach the same thing. But if you're really thankful, nothing will hold you back today. Will you come right now as we stand, as we sing?